Gainesville, Texas, a small Texas town on the Red River founded in 1850. Population, a little over 16,000. The town has long had a connection to our armed forces. In 1941, during World War II, Camp Howes was formed, named after Major General Robert Howes, a Medal of Honor recipient from the Indian Wars. The base trained hundreds of thousands of troops that would serve both in the Pacific and European fronts. After the war, Medal of Honor recipient Robert Gaylor and his wife Sharon settled down on a nearby lake, bringing the respect and legacy of Medal of Honor recipients with them as they promoted the cause within the town. What you're seeing is what's left of the old Camp Howes area. Uh, the uh, foundation, smokestacks, the water towers, uh, this once housed thousands and thousands of American soldiers. This is all that's left. It's been reverted back to ranch land, basically. This is a piece of history. The 84th, the 86th, and the 103rd divisions trained here. There was also just over the, the hill to my front left was a POW camp, German prisoners. I know my father-in-law often said, you know, I'm in Germany and the Germans are in Gainesville. It just doesn't seem fair. This is all that's left. With its old town square, closed down single screen movie theater, and large city parks, it's a classic piece of Americana out of an old Frank Capra movie. Families eat ice cream on a warm summer day, and the light traffic jam of three cars forms at the stoplight for the afternoon rush. I think that the city of Gainesville was a fine place. I, that's the main thing I can say. How are you today, sir? We had a wonderful time there. We were treated royally by the committee and the people that put on the ceremony. Small town America, it exemplifies what most of America is all about. And you know everybody here, everybody knows you. There's a lot of things to do here. We really appreciate the people in our town because we really are the typical American people here in the city of Gainesville, like most of the United States is. And it's just a great place to live. Gainesville is, is, is such a wonderful community. Uh, uh, of course, the fact I was raised here and uh, my family has been raised here for generations. And I can't think of any better place to raise children or continue the lifestyle that I, I want to live. You know, this is a good Christian community and it's what I want out of my life. I've lived in Gainesville since 1938. It's always been a good little clean town and the drinking water was good and the environment was good. Good hunting, fishing, work. We moved down here for uh, as a dirt contractor, uh, oil field construction mainly in 1938. I love this community. I was grown, uh, I grew up here, um, fourth generation. Um, it's America, it, it's hometown, it's heart, it's um, patriotism at, at its finest. Go through our historic district, look at our old homes, um, go downtown on the square, eat at some of, you know, eat at one of our nice little restaurants we have and look at some of the history we have to offer. There's a lot of history here from World War II and, and uh, throughout the years. Though there are always a couple things that prove a sign of the times. Heck, the town even has its own zoo. But one might mistake Gainesville for any other little town across America. Except they have something special. They have something that most towns could only dream about. One week a year, they show how proud they are to be American. Gainesville is the only city in the nation to host a Medal of Honor celebration. At the time that I was mayor, in the spring of 2001, we had been downtown to a program that was given at the State Theater. And after the program, several of us were standing around with conversation outside. And Mr. Pettigrew approached us with the idea of a 
host city program for Medal of Honor recipients. Started off several years ago, I used to attend an event of Iwo Jima survivors in Wichita Falls. And I had met all of the living medal recipients from Iwo Jima, except for two. And one year they were going to be there, but when I got there, they weren't there. So I, I asked why and found out that uh, they were so late making their plans, they couldn't afford to get them there. And I was with the mayor at an event in Gainesville one day, and I told him about that. And I said, you know, it's just a crying shame. They've done so much for America that some major corporation or city or somebody can't, can't say, your money's no good here. And he said, we can do that. And then he tricked me because I said, how are you going to do that? And he said, oh, I'm not you. It seemed like a fantastic idea for me. I had one of the city councilmen that were with me at the time, and he was a World War II veteran, and he agreed. And Mr. Pettigrew asked us if we would be willing to go to the city council with it. And when we did, the city council was unanimous in, in thinking that this was a terrific idea. And this is basically how it got started. It was a city-sponsored uh, program to start with. And today, I think probably a good bit of it is, uh, is local people are contribute to it enough that, that the city does some help, but it's, it's mostly local citizens. It's a program that's taken off. Uh, the idea of these fantastic people, these gentlemen, that have done so much for our country, being able to come into our community and interact with the people in our community was just beyond belief for us. They have come in and they have worked with the schools, they have worked with the service clubs, they have promoted uh, scholarships. They're just, just a tremendous asset to our community. We had to prove ourselves to the Medal of Honor recipients. You know, they get a lot of requests, their time is valuable. Uh, we can't waste their time or, or abuse their, their uh, schedule. And, uh, so it's built and built over the years. I think the main thing is that the community has gotten on uh, the board for the program from the, from the very first days. And uh, uh, it's just like here, where, where we're standing, you know, this is the kind of project that gets done from a public that cares, that has a passion about what they're doing. And so when this uh, Don started, Don and Lynette started this idea about the Medal of Honor program, about being a community that would host the recipients when they visited here and ask them to come and talk to our children, our kids, um, then that's a way we can pay back. They've, they've given this country so much, you know, where, where's the part where they're recognized as the, as the people they are, other than, you know, the big fancy things in Washington, D.C. or New York. So they come here and we'd like to think that we offer them some good old-fashioned small town community and hospitality, patriotism. And uh, we've been successful in, in having more and more of them come and share that with us. Uh, we've now hosted 22 Medal of Honor recipients through the course of the program and through the meetings of the, the national meetings, the Medal of Honor Society meetings, we've been fortunate to meet uh, most of the living. Uh, well now, there's 101 left. Of the 101, there's about 65 or so of them that are able to travel because of the health re uh, reasons. Keep in mind the last living recipient was from Vietnam. And so all of these gentlemen that are left are getting on up in, 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 uh, in age. And so a lot of them are just not able to travel at all. <clears throat> so we, we form committees, subcommittees, whatever groups, whatever you didn't want to call it. We break the event down into separate events. And uh, I recall one of our board meetings a couple of months before, I said, guys, I just want to go through like a mock event. Let's just say, okay, it's, it's Wednesday afternoon. And we went through the entire process through Sunday to be sure we hadn't forgotten something or a detail, things like oxygen tanks or, or wheelchairs or EMS or doctors or 
is uh, uh, being sure we have the, the records of the meds, the, the medications, especially that the, the older gentlemen are taking. Uh, food, uh, drinks, uh, hospitality arrangements, transportation arrangements, pretty much the whole thing, but I'm the ultimate delegator, but still, I guess I have the ultimate responsibility to be sure it all gets done. It all begins at the airport, where the Congressional Medal of Honor recipients are greeted with a celebrity-like welcome. We're going to meet, uh, I think we have seven coming in today that we're going to be meeting at each gate and uh, then taking them into the center, which we're going to provide, uh, we're going to have some sandwiches for them because, you know, they're starving when they get off those flights and uh, then just let them um, mix and mingle with our troops that are on their way to Iraq and Afghanistan and uh, just be here. Uh, the last one comes in this afternoon late. so. We will just see what we can do to make them comfortable until the last troops come in and they depart back to Gainesville. This is the second year I've come down to help out and it's my pleasure to help these good citizens. They've got a wonderful event that they do each year honoring our nation's military and our veterans and particularly the Medal of Honor winners. And it's just a great pleasure to come down here and support these folks. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Congratulations to you. It's nice to be here. I put this on so that you no, was going to have the hat. So. <laughs> we knew you. I've we got the, the cab hat there. Was, <laughs> that's what I was looking for. The local law enforcement makes sure to show their support as well. It's a good event. We appreciate it. I grew up in Gainesville. And, uh, it's good to promote patriotism and things of this nature, especially uh, during this time of war and so forth. arrival in the town, they're greeted by some of their biggest fans, the local school children. that comes to town generally is very interested in talking to the school children and interacting with them and uh, it has been <laughs> you know, a real revolution revelation for me in how well they have interacted to, uh, the school children and but, the Medal of Honor recipients. Uh, you... We're always proud to be here and support the patriotic visit that we experience here. I think it's, a, it's probably one of the most patriotic cities I've ever visited. They, uh, they really do an excellent job in educating the youth and they think that the youth is our new leadership and justly so. Beautiful. This is my first trip. Is it? Yeah, I'm totally indoctrinated, so you better be prepared. I'm coming back next year. Gainesville is a uniquely American city, in my, in my opinion. It uh, started this whole city program, and this was my, uh, I believe it's my third time of being up here. I think I was in on the first one when it happened and then came back the next one and missed the next two and now I'm back again. But it's a unique American city, has this program that's wonderful for the city. It, uh, uh, bring, bring, it brings the city together. Right now we're over here at the uh, Lee Intermediate School and it's just wonderful. The kids are just beautiful, just bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, eager to learn, but so smart. It is an awesome event, and, and I'm going to speak for the school where I work because we do an outstanding program. I know our teachers work very hard to educate the kids on what this really means so that they have some idea what these men stand for when they come in. And as I stand there and I watch 
as those gentlemen enter and I see these kids, they are very quiet, they're very reverent, and you don't see that when you have 400 kids in a room. You don't normally see that. So these kids are very quiet, they're listening, they're watching these gentlemen, and when these gentlemen leave, they're asking the teacher, what did he really do? Was he that old? You know, little kids don't have that perspective of time. So I see it as something that builds their character, makes them more proud to be an American, proud to know some of their heritage. The kids seem to be most excited at the book signing, where they have a chance to be up close with their heroes. Still, there's nothing more American than a great parade. We had a large group of airplanes for flyover, World War II vintage airplanes that flew over and they flew over and they flew over and they flew over. So this is really neat. Mm -hmm. And that's, and every year the parade gets better. We've had two years of the parade and it just has exploded. It's just so big we have so many participants. And the more the word gets out about the program, the more people want to be involved in it and, and come and volunteer and help. These are real heroes for the United States. It's a great parade. It was John Baca from Vietnam. He actually let me hold his medal, and that was just a high point in my lifetime, and I'll never forget it. And then there was John Finn. At 99 years old, John is the oldest living Congressional Medal of Honor recipient. John traveled all the way from his home outside of San Diego, California, to the Gainesville event. John's week began in front of an audience filled with gracious school children. He then attended the school book signing, where he was introduced to perhaps his youngest fan. The public first got to see their hero as he drove down the parade in a classic Rolls Royce. And after another book signing for the whole town, our most distinguished recipient is Mr. John Finn. John attended the closing banquet, where, on the strength of his own two feet, he strolled in the dining hall to partake in a night of honor and remembrance. John Finn, uh, he's a sailor from the days of iron men and wooden ships. He uh, is an American legend, an icon. When you say John Finn, anybody that knows his history is immediately attentive. Next year he will be 100 years old. He's our oldest Medal of Honor recipient. He was the very first recipient of World War II because he was at uh, an outlying air base at Pearl Harbor when the Japanese attacked. He was actually fighting World War II before most other people at Pearl. So he was, uh, he was someone who uh, is not only revered in the Navy, but throughout the services, and particularly in the Medal of Honor community as the senior 
uh, emeritus of, of Medal of Honor recipients, actually drove his own automobile to war. He was in private housing, uh, asleep that morning, heard the bombs, jumped in his Ford and uh, literally drove to war in his own vehicle. And uh, that car exists today and uh, they're trying to get it rebuilt and, uh, and make a monument out of it. And he came in and immediately started singing to me. And um, I got him to re-sing that song this year. And uh, it's uh, some kind of a China Sea song that the sa a lot of the sailors sang. And uh, to have a 99-year-old man serenade you is uh, quite an experience. He's a character. Um, uh, we've been real fortunate to have him here twice now. Uh, he has stories and stories and stories on top stories and loves to tell them. Just a great, great individual. Well, John is the senior Medal of Honor recipient. He, this year, he will be 100 years old. He uh, earned his medal uh, on December 7th, 1941, Kineoe Bay, Hawaii. Uh, he's an American icon. He's the last survivor from Pearl Harbor. And what can you do better than have the senior medal recipient? And he loves coming to Gainesville, he loves Texas. So very special? He is a very special individual to the society, to America, and to our community. He welcomed us into his home where he shared his life story. Here's the Medal of Honor. You don't get that Medal of Honor by accident. And this is the highest military decoration that the United States can give its military men. Right there, this medal is worn around the neck. It used to be the only medal, but now we've got another medal that's way below this in rank, but it also goes along your neck. That be it. Is it about right? I can't see. Well, this is a heavy medal, but you don't know it when you're wearing it. <laughs> in the Navy when I was 17 and I, by the time the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and you can I've always said I don't care whether they naturally say a great day of infamy because they didn't notify us well I don't know of any admiral or general that notifies the army all their secret plans the Japanese had secret plans and they carried them out, and they made us suffer. But they bit off so much more than they could chew. Never could they have, I would say never could they compete with our production ability to reproduce what they destroyed on December the 7th. I was wounded, and I had had all of my naval career, 15 years I'd been in the Navy, and I'd been a chief petty officer for six years. And it was just natural for me to do what I did. That's part of being a military man, soldier, sailor, marine, or airman, or whatever you belong to. You, in my case, I could easily say that's what I'd been paid for doing ever since I was 17 years old. So after the war, John and his wife moved just east of San Diego and built themselves a quieter and more peaceful life. All my life, I always loved outdoor work. And when I got this place, th that was my goal, to get a place in the country somewhere that had some room. And I was also a gun nut and I loved motorcycles and cars and 
all of this stuff for I could live with what I wanted. And my wife was of more or less the same uh, wants and wishes as I had. She was a beautiful woman. We were married for 66 years. And when we came out and bought this ranch, this was where I wanted to be, in the country. Now this ranch is 93 acres. It's a big place and anybody that looks at it knows that it ain't worth a damn. It's rocks and brush and gullies and hills and all that kind of stuff. But it's all Alice and I finally moved out here. We'd been out of the Navy for 10 years and I got, we both got the idea we wanted to get out in the country. We looked at all kinds of little ranches around this country. I can take you to several of them that we spent some time looking them over, considering all the things. And finally, when we found this chase here, this is an ex-church camp. A Baptist church has owned this place for quite a number of years, and they sent the children of those ch churches that are in San Diego area, where they would come out here and spend a certain amount of time every year as their vacation at the church camp was here. John quickly grew into his hero status. Over the course of several decades, John met and was honored by school children, towns, and even presidents. Yet he remains one of the most humble men you'll ever meet. There's one thing that is that happens to any Medal of Honor man. He is invited by the President of the United States and the Congress to attend inaugurations of the presidents. And you can don't have to go to them, but that's something that the average American, most of them would love to go and be present while the President of the United States takes his oath of office. And I've been to two of them, just two. So I've met, uh, oh, I guess four or five presidents. And one of them was Eisenhower, one was Jack Kennedy, I met him, and I then I didn't meet Johnson, and when President Clinton took office, I and thousands of other soldiers were present out at a big ceremony and on the island of Oahu, where Pearl Harbor is located, Pearl Harbor, Waikiki Beach, and Honolulu are all located on the island of Oahu. And I was there, met him, and I also met President Bush, both Papa and the son. John is proof that one of the most important things is to remember our heroes, because without them, we wouldn't have the freedom we have today. We certainly do honor our dead, and it's been said by many great men, and certain ones have quoted it, that the nation that does not honor its dead heroes, uh, not only dead heroes, but living heroes, a company that does not honor them is not going to prevail. I think that is the words that has been said. So we certainly should honor the veterans, regardless of whether they got all torn up or whether they lived through it all without any terrible wounds. John remembers and honors our brave soldiers fighting today. These young men, especially, and women, I suppose there's some of them too, that have gone over the young soldiers and done the wonderful work, lost their lives. Some of them were terribly wounded. Those are the ones that I, the ones that are dead, we can mourn their death, but there's nothing we can do for them. But the young soldiers that are coming back, and we've met several of them, not 
a lot of them, we've met several of them, lost their feet, their limbs, and their eyesight and things like that. Can't say enough for them. It's a terrible, a terrible thing that happened. All I can think is those that are terribly wounded and will suffer the rest of their days. They are the greatest Americans, I would say, that lived. These heroes are still fighting for us to this day. While we go to bed at night, they give up their lives while defending our country and everything it stands for. And some of them are still alive. And I hope they have a good, happy life and a reasonable, comfortable one. But you know, when a man loses both of his feet or one of his legs or one of his arms, it's a terrible price that he pays to defend our country and the rest of the people. And the rest of the people have nothing to say about it except the extreme gratitude and thanks to those men that are wounded. I happen to have lucked out. I and other guys lucked out. We didn't receive such terrible wounds. But those that have, and I, I can't say enough of them, enough for them, and I really feel it right in the bottom of my heart for those particularly just young men. Some of them are just kids. They're not 21 years old yet. And they've suffered terrible loss to their own person. So what more could I say? To end the week of celebration, Gainesville hosts a final banquet, thanking them for their heroic deeds and presence at the event. We always have the banquet, and the banquet's grown every year, every year. We, were, we, packed, uh, we have a packed house every year, and we're sold out weeks before the event. And we have the uh, various military organizations that come down to our town to participate in the parade. We have people riding us throughout the whole country wanting to know what they can do. So it's really added a lot to our town. Of course, the dinner is my favorite part, but it was, uh, it was fun watching the parade <laughs> and seeing those people, you know, we, I don't think we've always done the parade, have we? So, so that was sort of new the last few years. And um, our big is, is our big formal, oh, I don't know what the word to call it, uh, but it, the big blowout is, is where we have all the recipients there and the, they and the city puts on a program that, and uh, it gives us a chance to thank them for what they've done. The last banquet. It wasn't a dry in the place. Fantastic. First of all, we had 12 Medal of Honor recipients here. And three of those were people that were the real life people that Mel Gibson and some of the people played in the We Were Soldiers movie. And their story is fantastic and what they had to say, and the Paul Harvey aspect of after the story was, was enough. It was just a tremendous thing. And while honoring the Medal of Honor recipients in attendance, the town also took the time to honor our fallen but not forgotten soldiers. And it's, uh, it, 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 it's made our town uh, popular with everybody here in the country, I think, because we are honoring the Medal of Honor recipients. So we're very proud of what the people have done. Our Medal of Honor committee have, has done here over the past six years. They've made a tremendous effort and uh, really grown this particular banquet and the Medal of Honor recipient parade. We appreciate that very, very much. It's really interesting because we were so small the first time, you know, just a handful, and then now it's just grown and grown and grown. And I foresee us being able to bring a lot more recipients to the community to invite people from other areas to join us. Um, it's just an incredible patriotic thing that has a little idea that has just grown by leaps and bounds, and I think it will continue to grow.
there's a lot of interest in what we do. I, I think it has an opportunity to grow as far as our event here personally in, in the community, but you know we're losing recipients daily. Um, they're down to 101. When we started this program, I believe there was 153, and in that short time frame, you know we've lost um, at, at least half, and well, not half, but a third. And so now we're looking at in five years. Um, there's only 27 World War II recipients still living. So, you know, in five years, we don't know how many of those guys will have left. So what we've been trying to do so much is to get as many different guys here. And of course, we're fortunate that we have those that feel like this is home and they want to come back every time, you know. So hopefully by that time, we'll have some, some different ones be able to come and, and uh, be able to increase our, our record of, of the folks that have been attending and, and have our community be able to meet other recipients. We've turned over our board. Uh, the leadership process is, is a continually evolving. New people coming in, they want to get involved, and we try to make sure there's a place for them, uh, an important place. And again, there's no such thing as a not very important volunteer. All volunteers are important, especially when it's an all-volunteer program. As far as where we hope to go in the future, uh, the Medal of Honor recipients are dwindling. Today, there are only 100 still alive. Uh, and what our goals are is to get as many of these great Americans into Gainesville, Texas before it's too late so that our citizens can meet and touch living American history. Next year we're looking toward a theme of, of uh, Medal of Honor Aviation. So uh, the men who have received the Medal of Honor who were uh, fixed wing pilots or uh, helicopter pilots, uh, each year we try to have a theme and, uh, and so uh, this, this coming time it's going to be about aviation. So hopefully we'll have the five uh, Air Force recipients and, and we'll have uh, hopefully one or two Army uh, helicopter recipients. So while the city of Gainesville plans for another great event, it's important to look back and learn the lessons from our heroes. To learn that, even during the toughest of times, there is always hope and pride for Americans. I have great faith in America. Now I'm 99 years old and I might be wrong, but I think that the United States, our Republican form of government, will prevail and time will tell. <laughs> and I won't be around when it happens. Unless it happens next month. <laughs> to